better run, man Life's a pain, but you got me Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And if you haven't seen Across the Spider-Verse, I am going to get into kind of a spoiler here. It's minor, it doesn't affect the overall story. But we're going to talk about a sequence in particular, uh, especially one that references symbiotes in this, you know, multiverse of Spider-Universe uh, type stories that they're telling over at Sony with the animated stuff, but also tying into the live action as we saw in this movie. So I don't want to spoil anything. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. Uh, but I figure at this point, probably a lot of you who watch this channel have seen the movie by now. But if you haven't, go check it out before you watch this episode because we're going to get into some spoilers. So what I want to talk about is a sequence in the movie where Miguel and Miles are talking about the multiverse or the Spider-Verse as Miles calls it. And Miguel's kind of like, all right, it's a dumb name, but it sounds better than my dumb name that I came up for it. So, uh, so you know, they're having this conversation about canon events, you know, things that just have to happen that cannot be changed. And, uh, and they get into the, you know, the reasons why and all that stuff. I still feel like it's bull crap. I don't really believe canon events. I don't uh, feel like certain things have to happen. There's like fixed points and times that you can't change. That sounds like, you know, reasons to not try and uh, for some characters. And I feel like uh, superheroes should always try. And that's why I like Miles' journey in this movie is because he's like, even if I'm making the wrong decision, I got to try. I got to try. And, uh, and But I think deep down, Miles doesn't believe what Miguel is telling him. And that's really what it comes down to is a collision of beliefs. Miguel believes something because of what he, he went through himself, what he experienced. But is he interpreting it the right way? We don't know. So we'll find out, obviously, when the next movie comes out. But what I liked about it in the sequence is they showed, like, you know, Uncle Ben dying in different universes and they, you know, referencing cartoons and live action and then also getting into Gwen Stacy dying. And uh, you have this great shot of her seeing like, you know, how Gwen's story ends in a lot of universes and it ends with her death because she falls in love with Spider-Man. And that's another reason why she's hesitant to fall in love with Miles. And I love that Miles' answer is like, yeah, but there's a first time for everything, right? And of course, Miles would say that he's someone who is trying to control his own destiny and he doesn't believe in this canon event garbage that Miguel is spewing so you know which gives him a great point of view because it's I think it's a very heroic one because it's about trying and uh, and that's what Spider-Man is he is someone who tries he does fail when he tries but he tries and at the heart of Spider-Man it's not just the jokes or the quips or things like that or the responsibility in a sense it's all of it but tied into someone who tries and in that trying sacrifices and sometimes that that happens in the in the, in the attempt at trying so in here, though, they did, as they're peppering in, you know, Captain Stacy's death and other police officers dying and everything like that, that are tied to and connected to different multiverse Spider-Man, they have this web of symbiotes. And what's interesting about this one is that it's, I don't feel it's as detailed as like some of the other webs you see, because you'll see like certain Spider-Man cartoons and you'll see, you know, like a live action Spider-Man stuff and you'll see a, like, a you know, collection of a bunch of different styles of, of things from Spider-Man. So the Venom, they pull a lot of these images from the same universe. <laughs> they pull a lot of these from the 616, but they do pepper in some multiverse stuff. So I just found this interesting because half the images here are from the 616, you know, Spider-Man Venom universe in the comic books. And then the other three are, you know, from the multiverse. So uh, we're going to go through them real quick. So in this web, we get to see first up She-Venom. We get to see an image from her pulled right from the comic books. Uh, so we got Anne Wang, you know, being you know covered by the symbiote. And since that does happen in live action, it makes me wonder if maybe Anne Wang becoming She-Venom is a canon event. <laughs> but then again, I'm like Miles. I don't know if I really believe in canon events. I think a lot of universes have similarities and coincidences, but I don't believe in fixed points in time, personally. Uh, if there's so something, if time really is as fluid as these multiverse suggest they are, I just don't think there could be something that is concrete. Uh, but that's because I think like Miles. <laughs> so uh, I'm kind of stubborn that way. Uh, so anyway, seeing Anne here is really cool because that's pulled from one of the comic books. So I love that. But then also going around, we're going to go counterclockwise here. Above her is Tobey Maguire pulling the black suit off of himself from, you know, the Spider-Man 3 movie uh, out, you know, in, in the church and everything like that. So it's an image of that happening, which is really neat because again it's tying everything together and venom did say that he has a hive mind that he's connected to that is trans you know transcends multiverses and different universes and different worlds and so that is something that was brought up at the end of venom let there be carnage right before they got sucked into you know the mcu universe uh, for a brief moment in time uh so yeah so we got toby Maguire here now which is really cool and then next to him 
is a shot of Eddie from one of the comic books in the 616. Uh, so again, more comic book stuff, but pulled from the same universe that She-Venom is pulled from. So it would have been interesting maybe if they put the She-Venom from the movie in there, in that in that spot, instead of the comic book. But in the other webs around this, there could be symbiote stuff in there that I just can't see, because obviously I need to you know check out a Blu-ray 4K quality version of this screenshot uh, you know, to really see everything that's in this picture. So we're really just focusing on the front image here, but there could be other references in the other ones that I just can't make out right now. But at least in this first web, it would have been cooler to see a more variety of multiverses instead of three from the comics and three you know, from different things. Because there's more versions of Venom out there. You could have done Venom from the animated series, obviously. Um, you could have done Venom from Spectacular Spider-Man, you know, uh, which is a different type of Eddie Brock. So there's a couple different things they could have done, and I'm I'm kind of a little underwhelmed by this web, but also intrigued by it at the same time. So I thought I'd make a fun video. So we do have Eddie there, and he's being separated. He's gotten blasted, and the symbiote is coming off of him. So uh, so we have that image there, and then going next to him or underneath him um, is Spider Gwen, uh, who is you know being consumed by the Gwenum costume, or you know. So it's showing the multiverse where in the comic books, you know, her comic book multiverse version, not the animated movie version she's being possessed by a symbiote. So I'm like, okay, well, they got Spider-Gwen in there and she is on another Earth. And it, even though it kind of shares a similar number to, you know, the movie and stuff, like uh, they still, I guess, are separate universes, even though things kind of played out the same. Uh, so uh, so I don't know for sure. Maybe it's not. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's different than the other ones. It's different from the 616 comic book references. So I like that it's there for that reason. Um, and then underneath her, after you know, Gwenum there, we have Venom or Eddie, from the Spider-Man Unlimited cartoon. And you actually see the symbiote coming back over him because remember in that universe, there was a time where he gets separated from the suit and he befriends, you know, uh, the, the Spider-Man and the people he's teaming up with, like the you know, people who are been spliced together with animal DNA and stuff like that with high evolutionary. So you have, you know, Eddie there rebonding with the suit and that's right before he fights Carnage in that episode. I think it was like you know, near the end of the season and stuff. So uh so cool. Just another cool moment where you know you see someone bonding to a suit like you do with She Venom and like you see Eddie, you know, the suit coming off of him at that point. Uh but then you see uh Spider Gwen um is bonding to the suit in her image and then you see Toby pulling the suit off in his image. So it's a, a kind of a neat thing too because there's also three people bonding to images and three people kind of separating from images. <laughs> so, so or, or kind of fighting back in a way. Because um, the last image here, I actually had to really, really study this one. Because again, I don't have, like, I can't look at something visually all the time and go, oh, wait, I know exactly what that's from. I had to actually go through my digital comics uh, of, you know, everything I own of Venom to find some of these images to really compare them. And I was like trying to be like, all right, whose art style is that? Could that be from, you know, Sinner Takes All or is that from, you know, something else, you know, that where Anne is in. Uh, and so it was like trying to find all these things was, was kind of fun actually doing the research because this last image, this one was the one that stumped me, but what gave it away is the diamond on her chest. And I realized that that was Jessica Drew from the 616 universe. And this is actually a page, a big splash page from the Mike Costa run that we talked about that we did when we started this show. And I was like, man, this brings us right back to nativity, right back to the beginning days of uh, talking about Venom on this channel with the, you know, Edge of Venomverse and the Venomverse when those comics were coming out and Mike Costa was writing the Lee Price stuff. That's kind of when we jumped back into, or that's where our start, you know, our show started was at that time. And you had Jessica Drew bond with the symbiote and learn that it was pregnant with Sleeper, you know, which is one of my new favorite symbiotes. So, uh, so that's the image there where she's holding her head and you have all these like fractured images popping up that's going into her mind because the symbiote is bonding with her to share those memories so that she could explain to Eddie why the symbiote was keeping this a secret uh, from Eddie and why it was hiding some of Eddie's own memories from him. So a uh, really big pivotal moment though in the character's history uh, because it helped a lot of growth. For, I think Eddie, you know, after that Donny Cates took over and really took Eddie into a, a direction where he becomes a lot more heroic where there's a lot more communication between him and the symbiote and it uh and then they become heroes like essentially saving the world from null so uh so yeah cool stuff i mean so this little window here into this multiverse of venoms was cool that they included it like i said i feel like i would have liked to see more things 
then three 616 universe stuff, and then three non 616 universe stuff. It would have been cool to see just six completely different universe things, especially considering there's so many stuff out there. You could have put Venom from Web of Shadows in there. Again, we don't know what rights they were able to get or what footage they were able to use. So that could be a part of it too. So I totally understand that as well. Um, but with all the other references in the movie, I feel like they, they got a lot <laughs> at their disposal. I feel like they could have done a little bit more here, but it's still cool. I mean, it, they didn't have to include this at all in the movie. And I'm, uh, for us Venom fans, I'm so glad they did. So what do you think of this wheel? You know, what images would you have replaced out of here? Because you heard some of mine. I'd love to hear some of yours. And uh, do, you, do any of you know, uh, do you have higher res images of this? I know we probably won't until the 4K Blu-ray comes out and stuff. But I'm going to be pausing it at this scene and looking and seeing if any of those windows in the background at all have more symbiote stuff in it. And if so, we'll definitely make another episode and talk about it. But for now, these are the six of, you know, the multiverse of Venoms, I guess, that we saw a peek into in the Spider-Verse movie. And I'm so glad they included it. And I hope we get to see, you know, more Venom stuff uh, between now and the third movie coming out. Uh, but we'll see. All we really have between now and then is Craven. And uh, I'm going to get into that in the next episode because the trailer just dropped and I have some thoughts on that. So we'll get into that in the next episode. But for now, let me know what your thoughts are on this and we'll keep talking down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.